Hello, everybody. This is Terry, community manager with special guest, Nurse Linda. Hey, everybody. We have a great topic today, OPK testing, which is what Premom is famous for. And I know we'll have a lot of questions, so I'm hoping we can catch some of you live. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube after our live video, be sure to like and subscribe. And also remember, you can find Nurse Linda right in your Premom app under more schedule a consultation and under our nurse providers, if you would like to ask her further questions. We will be answering questions live that are related to OPK testing. However, if you have other questions for a fertility expert, we're also collecting fertility questions right now for our newsletter and moving into our new, newly launched community and the app will have an Ask an Expert feature in there. So feel free to share those other questions too, but we'll only be answering OPK questions live today. So let's jump in, Nurse Linda, why don't you tell us a little bit about what OPK testing even is, just for those who might be new. Okay, uh, well, OPK stands for Ovulation Predictor Kit. And of course, that's the, that's the big thing that Premom is uh, famous for is uh, they've got a great kit that just basically the, their OPK kit tests for ovulation. But I always like to be more specific here. An OPK test tests a hormone called luteinizing hormone or LH. And this thing, this hormone will, theoretically, it will spike, it will surge, it will peak, it's all kind of words, um, right before you ovulate, like literally a day before. So the test, even though we call it ovulation predictor kit, OPK, what it's really doing, what it's really measuring is the LH surge. And that generally, 99% of the time does represent ovulation occurring in the next 24 hours. So it's just a urine test, a, a pee stick, if you will, that is uh, done daily. Let's go into one of our popular questions or topics. What's the difference between like a high OPK test and a peak OPK test? Because that can be very well, confusing. Sure, absolutely. And of course, the blessing on this particular topic is everything we're gonna talk about, remember, is on the Premom website, on its app. There's a lot of pictures and videos. I'm a visual person, so we're gonna chat about it and talk about it, but I want you to know there's backups, uh, and certainly visual backups too. Um, so, well, you know, because everybody, of course, is a little bit different. When I mentioned that the LH hormone will surge or spike or peak, you know, it, it does. But does it do it exactly the same for everybody? In other words, is it a slow rise and then it comes down? Is it a quick rise and happens fast? Well, yes and yes. It could be that way for anybody. So oftentimes the OPK test, as much as we're too little long and when it's boring and nothing's happening and it's just saying low, 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 and then eventually it's going to start to go up. Now, sometimes it might take a day or two to go up to its peak for somebody. And you might see highs in the range there. Eventually, it will get to a peak generally. Also, these kits and this app in particular is so smart. It's artificial intelligence, right? And it, it's going to remember how you did before. So it's gonna get better itself at predicting the following month and the following month, the more data it has, the smarter it gets. So it's actually able to tell you, you know, when your peak is. Um, when you're brand new at this, it's always a good idea to start doing the urine test soon after your period ends, because we don't know what to expect. You don't know what to expect. Nobody knows exactly. But you will find after doing this for two, three, four months that you're going to notice you have a trend. Maybe you spike quickly. Maybe you take more time. It's all good. It's just the way you do it kind of thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, I love that. So you might have a very steep, a very quick surge and a steep peak, or you may have a very gradual surge that finally comes up to that peak. And there's actually a study that we talk about in one of our blogs, thank you for mentioning all our resources we have on our website, um, that talks about the single peak, and there's also actually a plateau peak, which can be very confusing for women, where you have 
the same value for multiple days. And then there's multiple peaks. And you're looking for the last, I like to say the last highest result. Um, also, can you talk about um, what level they should be looking for? That's a question that's asked a lot when they're looking for their peak level. Well, you know, my experience with, with um, the individuals as I look at charts during our consults is everybody seems to vary. I mean, some gals will have this really high spike and their number could be 1.47, but somebody, and, and of course it would say P, and somebody else got a 0 0.90 and it says P. But, but again, that's generally because the, the, the app is smart. Like I said, it's got it's got its own intelligence and it knows because of the last three cycles that when she hit around 0 0.9, she started to come down after that. And then a period came and she lost. So now it knows the app learns that it's right about diagnosing her because that's the value for her. So it's almost like you've got to really trust the app because the, the app is using historical knowledge too so there's not always a right and wrong it's what the app basically says and of course when you have pcos like you mentioned then it might it might be and all bets are off because you don't you could have we we tend to have higher lh levels in general so it throws it off a little bit right and i love how you described how it's different for different people the app is usually looking for at least 0.8, um, but it will adjust even a little bit lower if you don't find your peak in a cycle. It will go as low as 0.5 to help you find that peak. And I like how um, Nurse Linda, how you expressed testing right after your period ends. Um, because especially when you're first um, learning the OPK testing and continuing to test even past that first high result, because sometimes your body does gear up right, to ovulate doesn't quite happen the first time. If you stop testing too soon, you might miss the actual true peak. So when you're first starting, test longer, test earlier, and keep testing even a little longer to make sure you don't fall into that later peak or that second peak category. Right, which, which leads to, you know, that beautiful basal body temperature thermometer that Fremont has that, that, that's going to confirm you ovulated. So I really, for, for one's own sanity, I really encourage um, the basal body temperature as well, just because that gives you a confirmation that, okay, so now the peak told me I was going to ovulate and the basal body temperature told me I did ovulate. So now I've got double confirmation that it happened. That's a good point. And I'm glad we're talking about bbt more because it is a really helpful confirmation tool especially if your opk tests are confusing you mentioned pcos if you're getting a lot of high results or getting multiple peaks the bbt can help you confirm when the the true peak was when you actually ovulated that's I'm right back here i'm just double checking to see if there's anything else here i think we do have a couple of questions too I think certainly we can talk about no, one is, um, thing we can talk about is uh, when to test in the day and how and often, how many times a day. Yes, thank you. Good question. So I know we're always used to, um, like when we have to do our pregnancy test, you know, they were always told to do them first thing in the morning with the first morning urine and all that. So I've always thought any pee stick I've done, I, that's how we should do it. But the reality is, is our body tends to have our LH surge a little bit later in the day. So uh, it's actually much better if you do the LH surge in the afternoon sometime. And of course, like a lot of testing, it's always a good idea if you do it around the same time every day. Now, um, how many times a day you should test? Well, that depends on the kind of person you are, like we mentioned earlier. There are some people like, let's say a gal says, well, I'm at work. I can't do it in the afternoon. I'm, I'm just going to have to do it every morning. Okay. Let's say she's one of these gals who has a real quick spike, legitimate spike, doing its job. Well, maybe it happens at exactly, you know, I don't know, you know, noon every, every time she ovulates. 
So it's going to happen at noon on this day. She's going to have her peak. And she tests at six in the morning before work. And it's it's not a peak. It's not, not there. And then she doesn't test again till the next morning at six o'clock. And because she's such a quick peaker, it's gone. So it shows she didn't have an LHP. So in these cases, I always recommend if you can't do it in the afternoon or you just want to make sure you're hitting it, Again, one of the great things about the pre-mom kids, they've got a ton of pee sticks in there. So do it twice a day until you're confident too. You know, but yeah, some gals have to do it a couple of times a day because they might miss their LHP. So it, except for taking up your time type of thing, it doesn't hurt to do it twice. I mean, like I said, you might want to do it in late morning and late afternoon, or if you can only do it once a day, I might do it at some time between lunch and dinner kind of thing. Really, if you have that rapid surge that you're talking about, I mm -hmm. uh, learned that you can have a surge that's even four hours, the shortest four hours. That's so, like, right. Like I'm talking about with that woman, that's that's right. six in the morning testing. You know, even if she's testing at six and twelve, she's you know in that four hour mark. That could be tricky for so for some women. That's you might right. want to test three times a day to right. at least figure out which pattern you actually have. I think you've covered most of it. Do you have any other? OPK tips, any favorite tips from your experience? Hmm. No, probably the biggest one is just to, uh, I really like the, because the OPK can be tricky. So please gals, as you're doing them, don't think so please, gals, you haven't figured it out or something like that. It's just that they are, they are sometimes tricky. They're not always very clear as Terry and I have been talking about. So really consider doing the basal body temperature along with it. That helps you read better the OPK results. And follow your progression, use the app, talk to the community. Uh, women love to share their charts in the community and the new community, we have that same option. If you're still confused, we have consults. As I mentioned, there's Linda right in the app. She would love to talk with you about your charts. It's really easy to share right in the app with our providers. And again, if you're watching later on YouTube, please like and subscribe so you can keep seeing our new videos as they come out. And you can find Nurse Linda right in your app under providers, schedule a consultation. And we'll see you again for another video. Thank you for everybody for watching. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you, Nurse Linda. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.